friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a case of sinking nucleus this case was being done by my colleague after Rexis he did hydrodissection and then as he tried nuclear rotation he found the nucleus to be sinking and he referred the case to me so I have taken of this case next day the intraocular pressure was high I have administered Manitol 20% 200 ml and taken up the case so I have done peritomy and now I'm making a sclerocorneal tunnel my plan is to deliver the nucleus through this tunnel and then manage the cortex by three port vitrectomy. If I can deliver the nucleus through this tunnel, then I will not require phragmatome, that is ultrasonic energy, in the vitreous cavity. So I have made the sclerocorneal tunnel. Size of this tunnel is about 5.5 or 6 millimeter inject visco and now I take two hooks and try to hold the nucleus but I could not hold it nicely I found the nucleus in the anterior vitreous it has not yet dropped so I took a 24 gauge needle, pierced it through Mars planar, 3 millimeter behind the limbus, went behind the nuclear mass and supported the nucleus. And with the hook, I placed it over the needle. This is, this technique is also known as PAL posterior assisted levitation and now my plan is to use an irrigating vectus but I want to see the nucleus and here it is I can see the nucleus nicely go behind the nucleus with this small irrigating vectus and now I remove the needle hold the anterior leaf of the main wound with the toothed forceps press the posterior leaf and very gently remove the nucleus the nucleus was not very large so it came quite easily and now my plan is to apply three trockers this one is for irrigation this is an edited video and in some parts of the surgery the surgery has been played in high speed this is about four times normal speed this temporary suture of this temporary closure of this sclerocorneal wound why do I need to do this because I'm going to I need a closed chamber. I'm going to use irrigating vec irrigating contact lens over the cornea to see the retina and lens matter. So the main wound is closed and I put the irrigation on and start vitrectomy this is 23 gauze cutter after doing vitrectomy for some time I put the irrigating contact lens and I can see the optic nerve head macula and mid periphery very nicely this is a very economic device this irrigating contact lens is available in India 
Madhu in Industries from Delhi makes this irrigating contact lens. We can very nicely remove the epinucleus and cortex by the cutter itself. We don't need any ultrasonic energy to emulsify the epinucleus in such cases. But if the nuclear pieces are there in the vitreous cavity, we need to use ultrasonic energy to emulsify the nuclear pieces. And in those cases, we need to do thorough vitrectomy. But when we are using the cutter, if we can manage by core vitrectomy, it is fine. Some of vitrectomy anteriorly because there are some vitreous strands anteriorly near the main wound. After doing vitrectomy anteriorly for some time through the sideboard, I aspirated the cortex by the Simco cannula and here I found some more vitreous strands at around 1 o'clock used the cutter again at this time the surgery is two times normal speed I made a side port at 7 o'clock went through the side port to remove the cortex from 12 o'clock some of it is strands here so I go again with the cutter and remove these vitreous strands I didn't use trampsnolone acetate in this case because the patient may develop very high intraocular pressure in the postoperative period if I use trampsnolone acetate the intraocular pressure was already on the higher side when I started the surgery uh, again I went in with the mirror there are some more cortex dropped and that was nicely removed by the carter and now I used visco between the anticapsular rim and the iris to create some space and then implanted a sensor multipiece intraocular lens and when we have a sclerocorneal tunnel it is very easy to implant the lens the lens easily goes in the sulcus through the sclerocorneal tunnel if we use an injector we have to we need lot of skill lot of judgment to place the lens in the sulcus but with sclerocorneal tunnel you just have to go straight and place it over the anterior capsular rim the leading haptic as well as the trailing haptic I used an air bubble to keep the contour of the eyeball I didn't use irrigation because if I use irrigation the intraocular pressure becomes very high and suturing the wound takes some time at this time the surgery is four times normal speed this is the last bite the knot is going to be buried in the sclera pull the threads 
and you can see that the knot is going in the sclera trim the threads near the knot went again behind the lens and this is the last time I'm going behind the lens why because I have used visco and some visco has gone behind the lens in the vitreous cavity I want to remove that nicely if I do this the intraocular pressure is likely to be normal in the postoperative period this is the last stages of the surgery the conjunctiva has been reposited I had to close the scleral wounds, the sclerotomy wounds also with 9 nylon and this is 10 nylon releasable sutures to place the conjunctiva nicely at its original place this is the last releasable suture so this is the final step I used moxifloxacin at the intracamerally and these are some post-op pictures people is round cornea is quite clear there are few desmets membrane folds these pictures are 48 hours after surgery I dilated the people to see the retina I saw the retinal periphery and it is okay there is no retinal tear anywhere in the periphery I will repeat indirect ophthalmoscopy after 7 days thank you very much for watching hope this video will inspire you to take up challenging cases and it will help you in developing your surgical skills